All right, I think we are good to go. Uh, Jay, I'm going to get right into it. What happened with Marty? What was his problem? You tell me. I don't know what I, I don't know what what was what his vendetta was against me. I don't know what his feeling was, but for some reason that that human did not like me very much or maybe liked me as a person but was very nervous of me as a game player. It seemed like he didn't really have a lot of justification and was just randomly calling you a threat. You hadn't won any of the competitions. Do you think that it was personal? I, you know what? I don't think it was personal. I think that there is like this conversation of him saying like, oh, we didn't chat enough. We didn't have that. Like we didn't have enough conversations. I feel like I had some good conversations with him beforehand. I think it's honestly like we come from very different places and not saying that, that there's anything to do with like, like, I just think because we come from so, so many different places, our uh, communication styles are a little bit different. Mm -hmm. As our communication styles are so different, I think that he, my conversations with him felt different than maybe like his conversations with Gino, even though maybe it was the exact same amount. Did this whole narrative that you're a threat, you're a threat, like Jay's a threat, like wh where did that stem from? I, I think I, I just really like to talk to people. I mm -hmm. like to like just have conversations. I'm a conversationalist. I like to make jokes. I like to, I like to have fun. And yeah. I think in that way, he saw that as me trying to create alliances and connect with people in that way. But in all reality, I was just getting to know everyone. Which is, which is interesting. Cause typically when they say threat, 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 they're talking about like a physical threat. So like, it, it's interesting that, that he was so like motivated by this idea of like threat socially. Yeah, maybe I was taller than him. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> um, you seemed to uh, recognize that the boys were working together. Was it obvious to see that in the house? Were they simply oh. unaware that people were onto them or did they just not care? I don't. I just think they don't care. I think those mm -hmm. boys have like some bravado going on that is going to bite them in the butt very soon. Um, it is, it's right in front of people's faces, but I think the, the weird thing is, is a lot of the time you don't think that people are going to want to work with them all the time but everybody wants to work with the boys Alliance and I just want to break them up. <laughs> uh, when there are a group of guys uh, in the house that are similar in age, uh, can we just assume that they're just going to align with each other? It seems obvious, but like, I'll never understand why everyone else that's not part of that, like boys club, that sort of like 20 to 30, like boys club. I just don't understand why, when it's so obvious at home, why the house, like all the other people don't get together to take them out. Like, why is that? I agree. I agree with you wholeheartedly. All they do is talk about like football and farts together. And like, that's what binds them. And, and you, the second you start hearing about football and farts, like get them out. Because they're all, they're, now they're all best friends. <laughs> do you think, like, well, do you think it's like people being afraid of going against that like physical powerhouse? Is that why no one wants to make a move? Yeah, absolutely. I think that I think that what happens in the beginning of this game is people want to play really, really safe. I really wanted to change that for myself and like having conversations with people, trying to win competitions, doing that kind of stuff. And because of that, they saw me as a threat in a way that that I didn't that I was hoping that they wouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to make those big moves with those with those players at the early parts of the game or else they're just going to run the entire show. You seemed resigned to the idea of going home last night while Betty seemed like ready to go for an HOH competition. Was there a point when you knew that it was over that you didn't have the votes? Because it's sort of, I got, I got that vibe as soon as sort of like things started. Yeah, I mean, underneath, I for sure could have just like whipped off that harness and that shirt and I was wearing like a black shirt and my shorts underneath, I was ready to go. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I did talk to like Josh and Jess the night before and, and, I, and I did tell them that I didn't think that I could get the votes. Um, to stay and that they were already in they're already in a really bad position um, and I said that same thing to Jace and and Steph mm -hmm. it, that would kind of show their cards that me and Steph and, and Jace were working together uh, while they were like still working with the boys and I wanted to see those humans get as far as like all those four humans get as far as possible uh, but now you know now seeing that <laughs> that Herman and uh that, that Herman and Kyle voted for me to stay, I for sure should have told the five of the people that I, that I thought I had the votes for uh, to vote for me because then I would have been there still. You literally took my next question uh, right there. I was just going to ask you, why do you think that Kyle and uh, Herman voted for you to stay? Because they're jerks. It never works. I don't know why they felt like the only thing that like they were lucky with is that Kyle, like Arissa told me after that Kyle won HOH. So annoying. But he, uh, but Doing that kind of like like throwing the vote to try to blame it. I think they were trying to blame it on yeah. Josh and Jess yep. to 
to be like, oh, like they were for sure still with Jay or they like had another like an alliance kind yeah. of thing going on. But like that never works. Like people are gonna figure it out at the end of the day. Um, but because he won HOH, could it could work in his favor, maybe. Yeah. So the plan was, yeah, I I, I kind of tend to agree that the plan was just the hinky boat strategy, right? Of blaming someone else. Yeah, absolutely. He was they were just trying to blame it on somebody else so that um other people saw uh Jess and Josh's targets for this week. Um, what do you think about the game that Kevin is playing? You referenced uh, Kevin in your exit interview with uh, Arissa. Uh, what do you just think about Kevin in general? Honestly, there's no way I haven't I haven't watched any of the episodes yet, but there's no way he's not a little snake in the grass. Like there, like he is exactly that. I begged for that human's boat for so long and tried every which way to say like, look at how I'm better for your game than Betty. Like Betty just reamed him out at one point and was like, you suck. I don't like you. And then he was like, I'm still going to vote for her. And I was like, I don't understand. These boys were going to put you up on the block. And then Betty is going to try to backdoor you after she backdoors Marty. Mm -hmm. That was what she explicitly said to me. And I'm asking you to work with me. And you're saying, I'm not playing the game like other people. <laughs> so if he's not a snake, I don't, I, and then I, I, I don't know how to read people as well as I thought I did. Um, it seemed like you and Betty had the same group of allies when Marty made her uh, made her the replacement nominee. What was your plan? Was it to try and get the house guests like Summer and uh, Helena to vote with you? Or was the plan like because they're with Betty to go completely to the opposite side of the house and try and get them out of nowhere? I, I was really trying to get Helena more than anybody because yeah. I knew they were like a little bit closer in their room. Uh, I needed to get their votes to to stay and I and I I as much as I love Betty, um, coming last place in every single competition that you that you play in gives me good leverage. And I had to use that leverage a little bit. Um, I think that I would have been better for their game for sure in the long run. Mm -hmm. But also Betty is an amazing person. That's the thing that that's the thing that's really tough about this game is a lot of the time you're like, you are um, you are sometimes like trying to get the people that you love out of this game for mm -hmm. your own safety. Um, you seem to really connect with Josh. Can you tell me a little bit more about that relationship? Yeah, Josh is just like a little sweetie. He's he's like the nicest adult baby I've ever met in my life. Um, he it's it's nice, like both of us coming from similar backgrounds. Uh, there's kind of like just this baseline of understanding that's really, really beautiful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I haven't really been able to experience in like such a long term, like in such a long term in like and in that space. It's such a stressful space where like, you know, there is the popular kids and there is things that bring you back to like high school and being like feeling like other and that type of stuff. It was nice to have like a human in the space that was like that kept me grounded and that I could go to if I was feeling um, othered or different. Um, in uh, your sort of introductory video, you said that you are Black, Indigenous, queer, trans, non-binary human. Um, how important was getting cast on Big Brother Canada for you in terms of representing so many diverse communities? And how important was it for Canada to have you on the show? Honestly, it was so cool. It was so cool. I was so happy. I'm so happy to be able to represent a community. But in that, I always say like, I represent so many communities. And through that, I represent myself. I am very much in, in the mindset of, of individuality in, in the things that are your background are amazing things and they create the human that you are. Um, I hope that I remember when I was, saw my first play, I think I was like, like 18 when I saw my very first like black person on stage that I was like, oh, like this is something I could do, you know? And I was like, I can see myself in that person. And I really hope that there's some kid that's watching Big Brother and is like an Afro-Indigenous human or something along those lines and can see themselves in me and go, I could do that. I could do that, like Jay did. Um, what's the one thing that you would do differently if you could? I would I would have less shaky hands in the cake competition. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I think like the, the relationships I made with people, I was really happy with a hundred percent, but I wish I would have I really wish I had that steady hand and that feeling of that one, there was one cake topper thing that fell when I just got it to the thing. And I wish that would have went differently. Um, and I wish I would have made an alliance earlier in the game, mm -hmm. uh, but with who won all the HOHs, I don't know if it would have helped. <laughs> uh, and what was the best part about being on Big Brother Canada? 
Um, the best part is like meeting Jess and Josh. Um, it was amazing. Also, I loved balloon, the, the balloon poppers 2.0. I had a lot of fun popping balloons. Amazing. Jay, thank you so much. Oh, this has been such a pleasure.